In this video, we will show you how to scan and the sonnet anatomy required to perform an ultrasound guided ankle block. This block is indicated for forefoot surgery and surgery distal to the malleoli. The dose of localizer required is normally up to 20 ml of 0.5% levopipivacaine in 5 divided doses. A complete ankle block consists of 5 blocks the tibial nerve, saphenous nerve, deep and superficial peroneal nerve, and the sural nerve. This diagram illustrates the cutaneous innervation of the foot. You'll see the dorsum of the foot is mainly supplied by the deep and superficial peroneal nerve, and the plantar aspect of the foot is mainly innervated by the medial and lateral plantar nerves and the medial calcaneal nerve, which are all branches of the tibial nerve. The saphenous nerve innervates a medial component of the foot and the sural nerve, the lateral. We begin our blocks with the patient's leg in the figure of four position. We begin our block by starting with the tibial nerve, the largest of the five nerves. Illustrated here is the anatomy of the tibial nerve. Starting from anterior and moving posteriorly, you have the medial malleolus, the tendon of tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, the posterior tibial vein and the posterior tibial artery, the tibial nerve, flexor hallucis longus, and then soleus and the Achilles tendon. We start scanning for the tibial nerve distally and then slide the probe proximally. The left hand side of the screen is anterior and the right hand side of the screen is posterior. The anatomical structures illustrated are annotated here for ease of identification. Note the tibial nerve in the centre of the screen. In this video of a tibial nerve block you see the needle introduced from the right hand side of the screen or posterior as the needle is introduced and local anaesthetic is injected, the hyperechoic tibial nerve becomes highlighted. Local anaesthetic is then hydrodissected around the nerve, taking care not to go into the posterior tibial artery or the veins. The second nerve we block is a saphenous nerve. Looking at the anatomy of the medial aspect of the leg, you will identify that the saphenous nerve lies in close proximity to the great or long saphenous vein, and as such, this venous landmark is used to assist with the block. To scan for the saphenous nerve, the probe is slid anteriorly over the tibia. The tibia or medial malleolus is identified, as is flexor digitorum longus. The great saphenous vein is seen lining extremely superficially under the skin and subcutaneous tissue. The saphenous nerve lies in close proximity to it. In this video of a saphenous nerve block, the needle is introduced from the right hand side of the screen. You can identify the saphenous vein, and as the local anaesthetic is administered to the right hand side of the vein, the hyperechoic, very small saphenous nerve is identified. The third nerve we block is the deep peroneal nerve. This diagram highlights the anatomy relevant to the deep peroneal nerve. Looking at the front of the ankle, behind the extensor retinaculum, you'll see extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and tibialis anterior. The deep peroneal nerve lies between extensor hallucis longus and tibialis anterior, closely approximated to the anterior tibial artery, which distally becomes the dorsalis pedis. To scan for the deep peroneal nerve, the probe is placed at the anterior aspect of the ankle. The anterior tibial artery is identified above the tibia, and a hyperechoic structure lying on the lateral aspect of the artery that slides over to the medial side with probe movement is identified as the deep peroneal nerve. Extensor digitorum longus, extensor hallucis longus, and tibialis anterior are also shown here for clarity. this deep peroneal nerve block, the needle is introduced from the lateral aspect of the ankle. You can identify the anterior tibial artery, the needle approaching it and injecting below it, above the periosteum, and the hyperechoic deep peroneal nerve on the lateral aspect of the artery. We will now cover the superficial peroneal nerve. If we examine the anatomy now at the lateral aspect of the ankle, 
you'll see the lateral malleolus and posteriorly the muscles of peroneus longus and brevis and anteriorly the muscle of extensor digitorum longus. You will see that the superficial peroneal nerve passes between those muscles and as we ascend up the leg it dives deep between peroneus longus and brevis. The probe is now moved to the lateral aspect of the ankle. You will identify the fibula pointing to a hyperechoic structure sandwiched between the muscles of extensor digitorum longus and peroneus brevis. The left hand side of the screen is anterior, the right hand side of the screen is posterior. As the probe is slid up and down the leg, you can follow the superficial peroneal nerve as it travels between the fascias. In this block of the superficial peroneal nerve, you see the needle introduced in plane from the right hand side of the screen. Small aliquots of local anaesthetic are used to locate the nerve and surround it with local anaesthetic. Finally, the probe is moved to the posterior aspect of the leg to scan for the sural nerve. Looking at the anatomy of the posterior lateral aspect of the ankle, you will identify that the sural nerve lies in close proximity to the small saphenous vein. This is a useful ultrasound landmark. We are also surrounded by the Achilles tendon most posteriorly, the muscles of peroneus longus, peroneus brevis and flexihalis longus. To scan for the sural nerve, the probe has to be placed at the posterior lateral aspect of the ankle. Once the Achilles tendon has been identified, ensure that you identify the small saphenous vein. The sural nerve will lie in close proximity to it. In this sural nerve block, the needle is introduced in plane from an anterior to posterior direction. Care must be taken not to obliterate the small saphenous vein with too much probe pressure. As local anaesthetic is injected, the hyperechoic sural nerve becomes highlighted thus. Here are some tips for clinical pearls. Optimise your ergonomics to maximise your chance of success. Start scanning with the patient in the figure 4 position. This helps identify the tibial and saphenous nerves. We advocate in-plane needling. Of the five nerves, it's important to start with the tibial nerve as it is the largest nerve and requires the longest amount of time for the local anaesthetic to work. Then work systematically around the ankle, moving from medial to lateral. Aim to deposit at least two mils of local anaesthetic per nerve, except for the tibial nerve which will certainly need more because of its larger size. When trying to identify venous structures, be careful with probe pressure. Too much pressure will obliterate the veins. And lastly, if planning awake surgery, ensure the use of an ankle tourniquet.